Woo! Wow. That was an amazing sneeze <laughs> and an amazing way to start out this video. Hey everybody, this is Chris Francis with churchfilmmakers.com here. Thanks for joining me this week. Now last week I showed you how to turn your tripod into a big expensive light. And this week I'm going to show you a few other things you can do with that exact same trick. So let's check it out. All right, here we are in the one and only Adobe Premiere. Again, you could probably do this in any editing software. Adobe Premiere is just the only one that I currently know how to use, so that's what we are doing. All right, so we've got a shot here. We've got a nice wide shot. Every once in a while, you know what? Forget the close-up. Let's just get a really cool symmetrical wide shot here. So that's what we did. We've got our beautiful talent here, uh, AKA my wonderful wife. Looking good, um, and I got a question for you. Where are we gonna put that microphone? Uh, you could always put a lavalier mic on your talent. I personally don't like to mess with lavaliers unless I have a dedicated sound person uh, because I just have way too many problems with them. Either you've gotta clip it on the outside of their clothing and to me that just adds a layer in between the person and the audience. Um, it's just a visual reminder that they're watching a production and I think it just uh, gets in the way of getting lost in the story or you could hide it, um, but every time I do that, personally, I always get a lot of clothing rustle and it just never works right, or like the wireless pack, there's like interference, there's just way too many things that can go wrong, so especially if I do not have a dedicated sound man, I always bring a boom mic, but that is gonna be a problem on a wide shot like this because you would either have to put the boom super low or super high, and any way you slice it, the microphone is gonna be like, a solid three feet away from the person talking so your audio is going to be pretty crappy but wait wait who's what who is that person with a nice beard uh lowering a microphone into my frame oh that's me because i watched last week's tutorial video and i know that if you're going to stay on a locked off shot on the tripod you can get away with um, changing window exposures and you can also get away with putting a microphone hey what what is going on here? Not only is there a microphone in my shot, but there's a handsome cameraman getting a sweet second angle. Well, okay, that's a good looking angle. I'll give it to you. That's a nice close up. Uh, but since I learned the trick last week, wait for it. Ah, oh, somebody left this layer off. That was going to be a really cool reveal. Let's try this again. All right, that's a really cool close-up, but oh, wow, look at that. You can just get rid of your cameraman and your microphone. All right, so let's uh, let's just chat about this a little bit. Not only can you use this to uh, kind of relight your scene, uh, you can use this trick to get a nice close-up on this uh, particular situation. I only had a lens that was a 50 millimeter zoom lens so in order to get a close-up I had to get up in that frame and then to get good audio I had to bring the microphone in and now honestly I could have brought this microphone even lower because as long as there's a gap here in between the person and the microphone you can pull this trick off so if for some reason you did not see last week's video I highly recommend you going and checking it out but if you didn't I will give a really quick brief overview of how I did this So what I did is I just grabbed another video here of Krista talking before I put the microphone in and before I was there and I added a mask and masked out myself and the microphone and here's what that looks like when it's not over the layer. So what I did here, I'll show you guys just in case you missed it. I'll go ahead and delete that mask. So this is just video of her talking, there's no microphone. Um, under the opacity. I did it under opacity this time just so I could do the sweet, uh, the sweet fade in and fade out. Um, but you can either do it at the crop filter or the opacity filter, it doesn't matter. So you're just gonna grab the pen tool. Again, I like to uh, reduce the size of this. And you're just gonna make a kind of a quick and easy mask here. And that's gonna do, that's gonna take care of that for you. And then what you can do is you can find just the part of the interview that's got the microphone. Let's bring that back to fit. That's got the microphone and the camera person here. And then you can just bring this over here. And 
from the looks of it. It uh, looks like we didn't totally get that mic, so let me clean that up real quick. We'll bring this down just a hair. And then just in case, this should be an even match because the micro or because the tripod didn't move. But just in case, I'm gonna feather this out just a hair, just in case there's any perfections that we need to cover. And then boom, you're gold. So now she's talking. So really right now there's not only a microphone, but there's a camera person in the shot. But once we mask that out, you can basically put anything you want in that shot and then you can cut to that uh, sweet close-up shot and nobody will ever know that's what was going on. Now I do want to mention one caveat before you jump out there and try this on an important shoot. This trick best works in a situation where your lighting is not going to be changing that much. So whether that's a studio or whether that's a room where there's not too many windows and there's no direct sunlight. As you can see here in the frame, if there was a big window in here and it was sunny out and then all of a sudden it got cloudy during the middle of the shoot, you would kind of be up a creek uh, when you got into post trying to pull this trick off. So if you are in a situation where the lighting might change, I would recommend shooting a clean plate at the very beginning of your filming and also at the ending. So that way if at any point during the interview the lighting changes, you would at least have a couple of options and a couple of chances to uh, to better match things. But that is going to be a little bit of a headache. Um, hopefully in that scenario you would have B-roll as well. So if you try this trick in a situation where you're just lighting off the natural light in the room, uh, be warned you're doing that at your own risk. All right. If you found these videos helpful, share them and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm going to start doing these on a more regular basis and I'm going to be utilizing YouTube to do that. So hop on there and until next time, I will see you later. That's what we like to call good enough.